In this video we go to Cybertron, because this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever had on the channel. Meet the Unitree GoTo Air, a really affordable quadruped robot. So a lot of people have probably seen or heard about the famous Spot from Boston Dynamics. And if you also happen to know its price tag, then you might think that owning a quadruped robot, or let's just call it a robot dog, is something very niche, or that it is only for rich people or companies interested in doing some expensive research. And you might be right, because it is more of an industrial grade robot, which surely has an eye-watering price tag. But things seem to have changed from what I saw at IFA Berlin back in September. You can check out the short recap video on my channel. So there, my bot shop showcased their available robot portfolio, manufactured by Unitree. Ranging from small robot dogs to full-size humanoid robots. Which really caught my attention, because robots can be really fun and sometimes even scary. MyBot Shop is the distributor for all Unitree robots in Europe, especially the DHCH region, and this video was made thanks to them, because they were so kind to let me borrow their demo unit and have fun with it for a few weeks. So this is the entry model, Unitree Go To Air, and it is targeted more towards consumer and educational market. The price from Unitree starts only at $1,600, but this is only the advertised price, because add shipping costs, import taxes and fees, and we are going well over $2,000. But if you want to get it in Europe, then go for MyBot Shop, since then everything will be taken care of, and you get a good local after-sales support. Because MyBot Shop have their own interactive manuals for each of the available robots, and they are able to do service and 90% of the repairs locally, as well as install any additional hardware upgrades you would wish to purchase. But now let's get to the fun part. I was really thrilled and excited to have a hands-on experience with this thing, since I actually get to take it with me outside in the real world. And so it arrived in a heavy 25 kilogram box, which I had to carry around a lot, and it wasn't that easy, but luckily it has wheels so you can drag it around like a suitcase, but I often found it better and more fun to just walk the robot to my destination instead. And the robot dog itself weights around 12 kilograms. In the box you get robot dog itself, a remote control, charger and changeable rubber feet. To start you just put it on a stable surface and align its feet correctly. Hold down the power button and after a few seconds it starts spinning its lidar. And when it stands up, it's ready to roll out. This is the remote control, which is a really basic plastic one, so no crazy space tech there. In the middle there is a cheat sheet of all the built-in moves and shortcuts. And you can mount a phone in the middle to get a live stream from the app. So right away I brought it to an outdoor park, which had a terrain with steeper climbs and different ground surfaces. And I was expecting that it would be harder to control it. But it turned out to be pretty easy, since all the automatic movement and balance mechanisms keep it steady and level at all times. And if it can't find a stable position, it will take a few extra steps to ensure that. Still, because this is not my own robot, I was being extra careful not to flip it over or break it. But my bot shop insisted that I should try to kick it, to demonstrate how stable it is. So I did my part to provoke the future robot rebellion. But on top of being stable, it also has obstacle avoidance enabled by default on every start. So it should be pretty safe. The obstacle avoidance is controlled by a spinning 4D LiDAR on the front which basically makes it see all the nearby objects, even in the dark. Other than that, there aren't really any environmental sensors on the side or anything like that. The spinning lidar is guarded by a metal cage, as in case of falls or crashes, this will often be the first point of impact, especially for emergency soft landing. So only after a few minutes, I was able to maneuver it around with confidence. And once I managed the walking part, I went a step further with the fast-paced running mode, which makes it even more exciting, since it really puts those electric motors to work. The top speed of the GoTo Air is 2.5 meters per second, which would translate to around 9 kilometers per hour, and it performs really well. But I had to turn off the obstacle avoidance in order to unleash its full potential, and it would seem like quite a similar situation as it is with drones, where you would have to take the full control and operate based on your own line of sight. Once the obstacle avoidance is off, you can see that by the front light turning its color to blue. And for better visibility in the dark, you can also toggle a searchlight. And of course things did not always go so smooth, and it did fall down a couple of times. But that only happened under more challenging circumstances, where the surface was either too slippery, or the robot was not able to place its foot down correctly and depending on the crash landing position, it should be able to get back up quickly to continue its journey. 
But I am pretty impressed, because it was like really stable most of the time, and these situations barely ever occurred. With the GoTo Air having a physical controller, it is actually an optional thing. Since everything can be controlled via Unitree's app, there are built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi modules for connection, and you get a live in-app video stream from the robot. The camera quality is really not that great and serves purely for location awareness, but there is a possibility to add a better module for that. When streaming, you can switch between the camera and LiDAR views, and it is pretty cool to see the world the way the robot sees it, in a 3D environment, and the actual robot movements do correspond to the walking animation in the app. And launching those built-in moves and dances from the app is much easier than from the remote, since they are all selectable under a menu rather than using button combinations. Also, you can access some extended controls, like where you can adjust the speed and height levels for the running mode and dim the searchlight with a brightness slider. Other functionality of the app include self-diagnostics, viewing errors in case something goes wrong, and a lot of stats for nerds, with information on every motor and sensor. You can also download OTA firmware updates for the robot through the app. And another cool thing for the demonstration is the ability to create your own action sequences, with combining some of the predefined moves. So there are quite a lot of built-in tricks and moves, and some of them often made me stress, as I swear I thought it was going to tip over at some point, because some of those moves are really fast and aggressive. So here are some of the customized movements it can do. It can greet you by waving a hand, sit down like a good boy, sit down and draw a heart gesture, do a little jumping punch in the air, a forward jump from a laying position, and there is also the interesting dance, which has some pretty interesting movement patterns. And as you probably noticed, there are also different modes, like for continuous walking and running, and you can also lock the joints to do looking around without moving, just like something you might have seen from the spot. And by combining both joysticks, things got really funky. These are some strong mechanics right there. Then there are the special modes for stair climbing, and this is where things got tricky due to lack of additional sensors, as it does pre-programmed steps, meaning that there is no real-time assessment of the step placement. And the first downstairs attempt resulted in a crash, so <laughs> then I tried going upstairs and it went pretty good. Even though I was biting my fingers on each step because of what happened, it appeared to do much better on going downstairs in a backwards motion, probably because of the leg placement. So it is capable of many things and tricks, but what about the endurance? Well, it has an 8000 mAh battery, which is good for around 1-2 to two hours of constant use, and naturally the runtime depends on how you are going to use it. I was doing steep walking against the hill and lots of running, and with that I was able to get around 2 hours of constant use, before the last power LED started blinking, so I would say that it is quite impressive already. But you have to be really careful not to run it down to its last percent, because I was told that when the battery runs out, it might just drop down, so it's better to keep an eye on it. Okay, so naturally walking around with a robot dog is not something you see every day, and it is always interesting to see people's reactions on you just casually walking your robot buddy around the park. And the impressions are really different each time. Some people get really excited and they immediately pull out their phones to start filming, while others seem to just give it a weird look or no reaction at all. But bring this thing to a city center and attention is guaranteed, as we did just that for Halloween, because there just isn't a better time to get some impressions. Usually after doing some moves and dances, people started gathering, and in around 10-15 to 15 minutes there was a crowd anywhere we would go. I also often got asked, how much does it cost, so naturally people associate this robot with possibly much higher price tag than it really is. And with this, we definitely made Halloween more fun for some small kids in the city who went trick or treating. In general, elderly people seem to be impressed by the tech itself, but they also seem to take something like this as a new norm nowadays, just often asking at things like, does it bark, does it bite? And this just seems to normalize its presence as a dog. But do animals treat it as their own? Well, it depends. But we had a great opportunity to make it play around with real dogs. And while the first interaction is often scary or confusing, the next one sparks an interest and curiosity in chasing the robot and even playing with it. 
I also have a cat and a dog, and I did play with it a couple of times in my living room, sorry neighbors. So while dogs seem to get overly excited all the time, mostly on the sharper robot movements, the cat seems to not even care that much after the first encounters or just avoid it altogether. You probably noticed that a lot of the features are kind of playful and show-off, and the go-to air model really is more of a starter pack in the quadruped robots. This is all fun in games till we get to the question that I get asked the most. What is it made for? and what can it do? And there won't be a definitive answer for now, since it is still on the journey of finding the best places for its tech and capabilities, where they can prove to be most useful. As of right now, a lot of things serve as a proof of concept, and this is merely a tool for a chance to kickstart new research and ideas. See, companies like Boston Dynamics spend a lot of time and money in research and development, making Spot more useful and adapted for specific things with special add-ons and sensors. But Unitry puts the power in your hands for just a fraction of the price, so the platform can be developed by anyone to bring new use cases to life, with the help of robot operating system and available open source libraries from Unitry. And there is a great potential for this because of its appealing price. With something so affordable, it is available for broader audiences to start developing something without having to break the bank. But see, Unitry Go2 Air is the cheapest Go2 version available. There is, however, a possibility to go up with the Pro and Edu versions, which do bring a lot of differences in terms of hardware and functionality, as well as new tricks. With Pro and Edu versions, you can get things like higher computing power, faster top speed, long endurance battery, 4G network module, as well as intelligent side follow system and voice commands. And the most expensive Edu model can even opt for add-ons like robotic arm. But the further you go, the more thousands will get added to the price tag. So there certainly are options to make this relatively compact sized robot dog a top performer. So I just want to say, that it is crazy to see the robotic industry accelerating so fast, as just a while ago we saw these sci-fi-like videos with robots that we couldn't even buy or the price tag was just too high to afford. But now we have the best industrial grade features packed in a suitcase sized robot for consumer market that we can buy for nearly a price of a foldable phone. Well, Unitree has done it. And I'm really excited and also scared to see what kind of robots we will be able to own in the next decade and how could it improve our lives with the help of AI machine learning perhaps? Who knows? And maybe we might have the opportunity to meet other industry robots in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to see more interesting tech and see you in the next one.